requests that you have, go ahead and put those in the comment section, and I'll make sure to add them to the prayers next week. Also, don't forget your uh, agape meal food. So one of my things is I love collecting crazy mugs. Uh, last week, you might have noticed that I used my crazy cat lady mug. So this week, I'm using my bear mug. Uh, so each week, I'm going to start using something fun just to kind of make us giggle and laugh and have a good time um, with our comfort food, with our agape meal. To let you know that next week, we get the gift of having the Northwest Pennsylvania Synod Bishop, Michael Lozano, uh, who will be preaching uh, he'll be preaching on Pentecost Sunday, and then the next Sunday, we get to hear from our national bishop, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. So two weeks in a row, we get gifted with some pretty amazing preachers. So now let's calm our hearts and minds, and we're, I'm just going to keep talking to you because Andrew and Megan are doing some technical stuff that's way above my abilities. So until he goes back to the piano, uh, I'll just continue to talk to you and see what's going on. So I hope you all are having a great week. Last Thursday was Ascension Sunday. So today we're actually doing the, the scripture readings from our Ascension Festival, Ascension Sunday, our Ascension Day. Um, so we're not going to do the, the regular lectionary for the seventh Sunday of Easter. We're actually going to be doing the Ascension uh, Day scripture readings. And we're going to be talking today about what is Ascension. So I think we're ready to go. So let's calm our hearts and minds and prepare ourselves to worship by creating a sacred space. God, we pray that you meet us here. We are here, God. We are waiting for you. We are listening for you. We are open to your presence. Help us empty ourselves of fear, worry, and inner chatter so we can be fully present with you in this sacred space. Help us to rest and rejoice in your presence. Hallelujah, we praise you, our hearts join as one. Hallelujah, we praise you, our hearts join as one. Hear our prayer, oh God. Hear our prayer, oh God, today. Surely your presence is here, O oh God. Help us to feel and know it. Help us to see your love and compassion as we look into the faces of those around us, whether physically or through technology. Help us know you are here. Hallelujah, we praise you, our hearts join as one. Hallelujah, we praise you, our hearts join as one. Hear our prayer, oh God. Hear our prayer, oh God, today. The time has come for Jesus to ascend back to God. We believe in the resurrection. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and we believe in his ministry. We believe that Jesus loves and cares for us, and we know this because he leaves us with a gift, a blessing. 
Like Jesus, we can ask God to bless others, especially in times like this, when people need to know that we love and care about them. Hallelujah, we praise you, our hearts join as one. Hallelujah, we praise you, our hearts join as one. You are the river of God. You are the river of God today. We share in a time of confession and forgiveness. We serve a risen Savior, yet live as if in chains. Forgive us, Lord, that we are so hesitant to live the resurrection life. Forgive us that we fail to show through word and action the truth that you loved us into your kingdom through the glorious mystery of the cross. Forgive us that there is still fear in our lives that prevents us from achieving our full potential. We are invited to take a moment to silently confess our sins. Hear these words of assurance of forgiveness. God of resurrection, of life and death and rebirth, renew our hearts and minds. God of promise, of all beginnings and all endings, renew our hearts and minds. God of hope, of new growth and harvest, renew our hearts and minds. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Pray with me. Holy God, you gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, to walk with us and teach us on earth. As he ascended, you kept your promise never to abandon us and sent your Holy Spirit. Ignite our hearts with your Spirit to go out into the world blessing others as Jesus blessed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
Our children's chat this week comes from Max and Mason. So I just want to thank Max and Mason for spending some time with me this week. Today, we are talking about the ascension. And when Jesus, according to the book of Luke, at the end of the, the book, the very, very end of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus ascends, which means he, he um, literally rises up into the sky and he goes back to heaven with God. And so when he does that, the very last thing he does is blesses people. Now, when somebody sneezes, what do people often say? Bless you, bless you, or God bless you. Exactly. Now, did you know that back in the day of really horrible disease, kind of like COVID-19, sneezing was one of the symptoms? So when people would sneeze, kind of like today, people were nervous that somebody had disease. And so they would say, God bless you, which meant, I hope God blesses you and you get better and you don't get sick. And so that's why every time somebody sneezes, we say, God bless you. What we're saying is, I hope it's just a sneeze and that you're not sick. And so a blessing is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So when somebody gives you a blessing, that means they're giving you Something that's very, very good. So have you noticed at the end of our church service, we always have a blessing and we say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the end of every church service, we say uh, we, that we hope that God blesses each and every person, including all the children and all the adults and everybody in the church, that we hope that they have a very good week and that God blesses them. So Jesus leaves us with a blessing and causes us and, and, and challenges us to go out and bless other people. So there are tons of different blessings that we can have. There is such a thing as a house blessing. So when you guys first moved into your house, maybe you were babies. Were you babies when you first came into your house? My brother was in the old house, but... Um, I don't think, I don't Max think. Max was born in this house. He was never in a different house. Right. He had been living in this house for his whole life. But Mason, you were in a different house. Like for, when I was like, like eight months old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you come into a new house, sometimes it can be very scary. So I didn't really feel like that because I was a baby. I didn't really have feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is understandable. But sometimes mm -hmm. people decide to do what's called a house blessing. And they go into their new homes and they ask God to bless them so that their children that they bring into their homes are safe and happy. We do house blessings. Sometimes, have you ever gotten a new car? Yeah, we got a new car, like, yeah. two years ago. Yeah, exactly. So when yeah. people get a new car, sometimes we do blessings on the new car to ask God to bless it and keep it safe and all the people in it safe because there's a lot of love in cars because people, you know, grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and moms and dads, they all love you. So every time you get into a car, we ask God's blessings on that car, that it's safe, and that it gets you to where you need to be. And maybe that's a Chiefs football game. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> that would be awesome. So we can bless anything. And one thing we bless often is food. And we say, God, bless this food and help it to nourish us and energize us so that we can go outside and catch the football. Or for me, more likely a baseball. <laughs> I can't. I've tried. It always hits me in the face. So, will you guys pray with me today? <laughs> Dear God, thank you for the blessing that Jesus gave to us as he ascended back to be with you. Help us to continue to bless people 
um, especially as we go through this time of the pandemic and having to be at home. Bless our homes, that they are safe and that they are peaceful. And bless our parents and bless all the children and bless God, that we all uh, look to you and remember that you have good things in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now hear the word of the Lord through our Holy Scripture. Our first reading is from Acts, the first chapter. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going up and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are to witness, you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have moved with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We don't talk about the Ascension very often. We all know about it because every Jesus ascended and is seated at the right hand of the Father. But we don't often talk about what the Ascension actually means. The, uh, so Luke talks about the Ascension twice. Once at the end of his Gospel, and again at the beginning of his book of Acts. Luke wrote both the Gospel of Acts, the, the Gospel of Luke, and the book of Acts. And he ties those two books together with the Ascension story. So let's first take a look at the Ascension story 
in the Gospel of Luke. Now, this gospel story, like I said, comes at the end of his book. And it happens on the same day as the resurrection. So by putting this, this uh, ascension story at, at the same time, at the same day as the resurrection story, Luke is tying those two stories together. Now we know that the resurrection is about the forgiveness of sins. In the resurrection, Jesus conquers death and sin so that nothing can separate us from God. So one day, we too will share in the resurrection because death and sin no longer have the final word. God has the final word. And so we will resurrect into new life with God. The ascension happens at the same time. And that's when Jesus physically ascends. So Jesus has just revealed himself after his resurrection to the disciples. They're all sitting in the room. Jesus appears to them. And then on that same day, he ascends physically. His body goes back to God in heaven. So these two stories are linked. And they're linked because both stories validate for us who Jesus was and what he did here on earth. As Jesus says, he is the, uh, he fulfills the scriptures in the Hebrew scriptures, the prophecies in the Hebrew scriptures. Jesus does everything that the Messiah was said to do. And so he is validated as God's son, as the Messiah. And he has also validated his whole ministry by the resurrection and the ascension. So we know that all Jesus did, all the healings, all he taught was true. It is validated. And so we also can trust what Jesus says to us in the ascension. That God will send the Holy Spirit to us. And that Holy Spirit will empower us. Through the Holy Spirit, we have the power of God to go out into the world and do the ministry of Jesus Christ. We continue the ministry of Jesus Christ, and we can trust that because we know who Jesus is, and we know what he did on this earth. We trust it. We believe it. It is validated. And that's why this comes at the end of the Gospel of Luke. It's the culmination of his entire book, his entire Gospel. It all comes down to the resurrection and the ascension. And the very last thing we hear from Jesus before he ascends is a blessing. Jesus leaves us physically from this world with the love and the caring that he preached about. And we'll talk more about blessing in a little bit. But before we talk more about blessing, let's go ahead and move on to the book of Acts. So where Luke ends his gospel with the ascension story, he begins his book of Acts with this story. And so it takes on a different meaning he validates Jesus' ministry and who Jesus is at the end of his gospel. And as we move into the book of Acts, which is the history of the Christian church, we're greeted again with the ascension story. The book of Acts, like I said, is the history of the Christian church. It hasn't been started yet. And so in the Luke story, or in the um, story in Acts, the disciples look at Jesus and they say, when are you going to restore Israel? Let me say that again. When are you going to restore Israel? And Jesus responds that it's not our place to know God's time. God will restore Israel when it is time. And then Jesus says, what I think is absolutely brilliant. He switches the, the emphasis from him 
to us. He says in verse 8, But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So where the disciples look at Jesus and say, when are you going to restore Israel? Jesus says, you are going to restore Israel through the power of the Holy Spirit. And not only Jerusalem and Samaria, but you're going to go to the ends of the earth and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the ascension story in the book of Acts leans us into Pentecost. So the first story is that of the Ascension, and the second is that of Pentecost, which is next week. So don't forget to wear your red next Sunday. Pentecost is a high festival where we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming down on the apostles, and that's why we wear red, because the Holy Spirit ignited their hearts to go out into the world and continue the ministry of Jesus Christ, to go out into the world and create through the power of the Holy Spirit, the church. And that's why Pentecost is the birthday of the Christian church. If we were all together, we could have cake that says, Happy Birthday, Christian Church. So Pentecost is the beginning of the Christian church because that's when our hearts were ignited by the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, Continue his ministry out into the world. And that's why Jesus says, I'm not going to do it. I'm physically not here. You are physically here. I will help you. Because Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the same thing. So Jesus' essence, which is the Holy Spirit, empowers us to go out and to do but friends, how do we go out and do in the midst of a pandemic? We can't even leave our homes. God ignites our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is promised to us at the ascension. But we're stuck in our homes. We can't go out and do. We're supposed to stay home. We're supposed to social distance. So let's revisit that idea of blessing. Blessing is so important. A blessing is a gift from God. We're going to sing for our sending hymn, Count Your Blessings. A blessing is a gift from God. A blessing is a good thing. And so Jesus leaves us with a blessing, a gift from God that shows God's love and God's caring. That's why we end every worship service with a blessing. The most famous blessing is, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In that blessing, we know what to ask for. We're going out from this place into the world to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ. So we know what to ask God to bless us with. Because remember, we don't do the blessing. God does the blessing. We just ask God to bless. And so we know at the end of worship what to ask for, but that's not always the case. In the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus blesses, the word that Luke uses in his Gospel is euglia, which sounds like eulogy. Eulogia. Eulogy. So a eulogy is actually a blessing. It's a blessing on the life of the person who has died. It's a blessing on their life that is to come, their new life in Jesus Christ. So we ask God to bless the life that was, and we celebrate it. And we also ask God to bless their new life, their resurrection and ascension to God. And then we ask God to bless the family. But we don't always know what the family needs. I mean, did they have a good relationship with the deceased? Are they sad? Do they need comfort? We don't know what they need. So it's really awkward to know what to say to somebody who's just lost a loved one. So sometimes the best thing that we can ask for 
is that God bless them this day, whatever they need. Today is the last Sunday of our sermon series, Life After, where we've been studying life after the resurrection for the disciples, learning and thinking about how we are going to live in our resurrection, life after this pandemic. When Jesus ascended and went back to God, he left us with a blessing. And blessings are something that we can do now. And we can take it into life after the pandemic, where we ask God to bless those that are going through difficult times. Because let's be honest, this pandemic is not easy. But we don't always know what blessings to ask for. I mean, some introverts absolutely love social distancing. They love being at home. And some extroverts are absolutely in agony right now. So when, during this pandemic, when we need to bless someone and don't know what to do, we can ask them, what would you like me to ask God to bless you? Or we can just say, may God bless you this day in however you need. And then after this pandemic, we can remember and we can continue that ministry of blessing because a blessing is a gift from God. It shows that we love and we care about people. And so friends, I leave you today with a blessing that God bless you however you need this day. Amen. Let us confess before God and one another our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, we pray. God, we pray. Trust in you, hear all. Trust in you, hear all our prayers. We come to you. We come to you. Praying for a world in need. Praying for a world in need. God, we pray. God, we pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Living God, you chose us to be your witnesses in the world. Focus our hearts and minds on the ministry you call us to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless all who are with us today with whatever they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, all creation sings praise to you. You delight in the oceans and the mountains are your throne. Teach us humility and respect for our home. God, we pray for those in Michigan who are experiencing disastrous flooding. Keep them safe, especially during this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you rule the heavens, the earth, and time itself. Make this a time of justice, peace, and solidarity among all nations and peoples, so that oppression and violence rule no more. We continue to pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations who are striving to reopen. Bless our church council as they make decisions for St. Paul's. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, Wait with hope for your presence to heal us, bless us, restore us, and give us peace. You know all the names of those who suffer for whom we pray this day, especially Linda and Paul Conrad, Sean Conrad, Marcia Grace, Charles Roward, Kay Heidler, Jan Sperlin, Jared Bliley, Debbie Furman on the death of her brother and friends of St. Paul's, Natalie, Kelly, Sandy, Ron, Linda, Crystal and her family on the death of her father, Pat Bauer, and those we name now aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray for all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please join me 
in our offertory prayer. We pray over the offering that has been sent to the church by mail or electronically. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. When we aren't able to meet together to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we can participate in the ritual of the agape meal. Agape is the Greek word used for the kind of love God has for us, unconditional and never-ending. It's the kind of love God calls us to have for each other. We need to be together to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion, but we don't need to be together to participate in an agape meal. It's a meal that commits us to love God and to love each other as a community of faith. When we break bread together as a church in our worship, we remember that Jesus invited all people to his table. And we continue this by welcoming all people to our agape meal. Comfort food brings us comfort, and so does sharing that comfort as a community of faith. It makes the meal more powerful. The people we are sharing this meal with support and love us with agape love. We might not be able to hug or physically be together in worship, but we can share this meal knowing we are together as a family of God. Please pray with me. Holy Comforter, we gather in your name invited by Jesus and bound together with your Holy Spirit. Through that love we feel from God and one another in this meal, strengthen our resolve, keep our hearts and minds positive, and help us be patient until that day when we will emerge into a new life. Surround us each and every day with your comforting presence so we can comfort others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. It is because we know the agape love of God and trust God is always there, we are able to sing. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I now invite everyone to take something to eat. Hold it in your hand for a moment. God, we ask you to bless this comfort food. Help us to be strengthened by it and be strengthened as we eat it together as a family of God so we can face whatever is to come knowing that you love us and will always be with us. We are invited to take a bite of comfort food.
I now invite everyone to take something to drink. Hold it in your hand for a moment. God, we ask you to bless this drink. Help it wash away our fears and worries so we can see the gifts you give us every day. We are invited to take a drink. Please join me in the final table blessing. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection and ascension, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And as people who have all spent time in this sacred space together, we pray the presence of the Lord goes with us, creating sacred spaces wherever we go. We came to be forgiven, to be renewed, to be nourished, to be healed, to be known. We leave this space knowing God is always with us. Receive the blessing. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.